today's video, we are talking about one of my all time favorite book tropes. And from the title, you can tell that that is the fake dating book trope. I feel like I've read a bunch of books and some of them deliver and some of them not so much. These are my top tier. They are my God tier. I do have some young adult books. I also have some books that are part of series, adult romance series, and then I have some adult standalone books. Oh, they're just so good. So let's get into it. Fake dating, fake dating. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kat and today we're talking about fake dating books. I want to start off with the YA books and then we'll move on to the series books and then the standalones. And these are in no particular order. They're just in categories because I couldn't pick a favorite even if I wanted to. I guess that's just what being a book lover is all about. So we're going to start off with Counting Down with you. This is probably one of the best diverse YA books that I have ever read. This one follows our main character Karina. She is a senior in high school and her parents have decided to go to Bangladesh for a month and she's really excited about this. She's high she basically gets time away from her family and she also gets to figure out what she wants to do with her future. But there's also this guy named Ace who technically is like the bad boy of her high school and she ends up tutoring him slash fake dating him. And I love that for her because this guy is like such a dream. <laughs> he is great. He's fantastic. But this book is so much more than its fake dating plot. The cultural representation, the double standards that occur in some families, the expectations, societal and parental, so freaking relatable. And when I finished reading this, I'm like, I have to give this to my future child. I don't have plans for one right now, but they're gonna read this. <laughs> I can't say enough good things about this book. It is an absolute gem from start to finish. And like I said, our boy Ace, <laughs> then we're going to talk about one of my other favorite fake dating books, and that is Dungeons and Drama. This book is such a rom-com. The main character in this, Riley, she basically breaks some pretty major laws, and she steals her parents' car so that her and her friend can go see Waitress on Broadway in, like, their local city. Of course, she gets caught. <laughs> there was no way that this girl wasn't going to get caught. And her punishment is to now work at her dad's board game store, slash a place for them to play games. That's where she meets her co-worker, and they do not get along at all. But but for some reasons that you'll find out if you read this, they end up fake dating. I know I just said that Ace is a dream, but this boy, I swear he has mad game. This worked for me. I loved the fake dating, but I really loved the friend group. This like found family friend group that just gave me life. I loved them. I want to hang out with them. This is for the theater kids, for the people who love games, board games, RPG, whatever kind of games. You get all sorts of gaming rep with this and it's just so light and adorable. I read this at the beginning of the year. I have not been able to stop thinking about it. And that is why it's in this video because I want you to read it too. Also honorable mention, better than the movies. It is everywhere. I've talked about it a bunch. This is the ultra rom-com. This is YA friendly, much like the first two. It is a adorable and has a very cute fake dating subplot. What do we call this subplot? There's so much happening in that book, but better than the movies. Now there are two books. I don't know why I'm doing that with my hands, but there are two books, two books <laughs> we have to talk about. And the first one is The Fake Out. This is the second book in the Vancouver Storm series, which is available on KU. We love that. We love to see it. We love to read it. I liked the first book in the series and it is kind of important for you to read that book before you read this one. Not imperative, important, but this is probably one of the spiciest and on-point fake dating books that I have ever read. Unlike the books I just mentioned, this one is dual POV and I swear that just beefs this book up even more. The two main characters have known each other in the past and now they work together. The male main character, he's a hockey player and the female main character, I think she's like a, a physio, she's a physio person for the team. Something happens and then they're forced to fake date, but it really kicks off immediately. This boy is all in. He is giving just like the best golden retriever energy, but he's sassy and he's fun. And there's some little, like a little possessiveness, but not, not really just like a dash, just enough to flavor the meal some more. <sighs> and this meal is flavorful. <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna love this couple because you do meet them in the first book. I was wrong. I was proved wrong and now I have to read everything by this author because she has other books. Another completed series on KU. And I can't wait for the third book, which I think is coming out in December or late this year. Oh, it's gonna be so good. And also very spicy. The spice was... <laughs> It was hot. It was hot. We are also going to talk about one of my favorite books, and that is The Right Move. This is the second book in the Windy City series. Again, like The Fake Out, this is dual POV, and this one is longer. I actually don't know if it's longer than The Fake Out, but it's like a longer read. And honestly, it's so worth it because you get all of these moments that just stack so well to this beautiful, 
story that I can't tell you about because that's a spoiler. Because this is a sequel, I do recommend reading the first book because the first book introduces you to this couple. And if you read this, you're going to spoil the first book and you don't want to spoil the first book. Maybe you do. I mean, I break my own rules all the time. You decide. This is a sports romance, much like the fake out. The male main character in this, Ryan, he is just the best basketball player. He is MVP all the way. His team's a little concerned. They're like, hey, what what's life outside of basketball? You don't know the answer to that. So you should probably like, get a girl. And he's not interested in that. So he decides to fake date his sister's best friend, who's also going through some major changes in her life right now. They fake date. There's lots of denial. There's lots of, oh, I can't stay away from her. And I love that. <laughs> Good amount of jealousy in this, some pining, and just a whole lot of lovely, book boyfriend moments. I love this couple so much. I love all the couples in this video. What am I even saying? But amazing. I don't know a single person who doesn't like this book. And if you watching have not liked this book, I value your opinion. I personally uber love it. <laughs> I love it as much as I love Halloween. I like Halloween quite a bit. Not as much as fall, but I like Halloween. Anyways, spicy on KU, much like the fake out. There's some sports romance series sequels that deliver. Now that we are done with the series Rex, we're going to move on to the standalones. And I feel like the best place to start is with the kiss quotient. I remember reading this when I got back in reading. This was so popular and I feel like that popularity has died down a bit and I understand, but I'm here to bring it back because this book is such a gem. It is dual POV and one of the main characters Stella, she decides that she needs some more experience in the dating field. But in order to do that, to get said experience, she decides to hire an escort to teach her a few things. That is the best way for me to put it. It's giving pretty woman, but just reverse it. So she hires Michael and they, you know, they, yeah. <laughs> say anything more than that. But I will say this, you will love Michael. He is a total softy and he sees Stella for who she is and their bond and their story is fantastic. We get tons of representation in this book. It is a diverse read. We also have autism rep and we get to talk about the importance of consent. It's very important and I love how it was addressed in this book. And there are just some beautiful moments between the two main characters, also very real and relatable moments. I love this couple. I love this book and I just feel like more people should read it. Then we we just have to take a minute and talk about the fake mate because this book really snuck up on me. I didn't expect it whatsoever. I kind of really love it. No, I really love it. So it is dual POV, which I feel like just levels this book up so much. The two main characters, Noah and Mackenzie, they work at the same hospital. Noah is a cardiologist and Mackenzie works in the ER and they both need to fake date for, for shift for shifter reasons. They're both wolves. This is normal. Think of it like true blood where basically there's our world and there's just like shifter, shifters are known. You'll run into them in the streets. It's not weird. It's not strange. It's just the way it is. Their time spent together fake dating was some of the most enjoyable fake dating content that I've ever read about. Reading both of their POVs, you could just tell they were pining. There was denial. There was tension. There was so much Attention. It was spicy and it was hot. This is technically a shifter book slash an Omega verse book. I am not the authority on it. This is my first one that I've ever read. And it is a very big deal that this was traditionally published. I personally thought that it delivered the shifter content. You can skip if it's not your jam. I, I read it. I read it. It was, it was a learning experience for science. I read it for science. It was like the eye emoji. Like I was like, what am I reading? But I had fun with it. And I think that if you were open minded, or if you were a fan of the Omega first books, you might vibe with this one too. It's an experience that I feel like why the heck not? Try it out. Life is short and this is fine. But also just shows like a real connection. Like I really bought that these two would stay together. And sometimes when you're reading a romance book, I don't buy it. And I bought it with these two. Bought it all the way home. Then last but not least, we have to talk about the love hypothesis because this was the book that got me into fake dating. It made me love the book trope. And I feel like it's probably still my favorite by Allie Hazelwood. This one is single POV. It follows the main character Olive. I think she's a PhD student and one of her best friends wants to date someone that she went on a date with, a few dates with. But her best friend is all about girl code. She's like, I can't date him. You dated him. That's weird. I like him, but I don't want to cross the line because we're best friends. And she's like, look, I really wasn't into him. <laughs> you can have him. But her friend 
wasn't having it. Friend doesn't believe her, so she decides to kiss the first guy that she sees, and that just happens to be Adam Carlson, who is not liked at the school whatsoever. He's technically higher up than her, but she doesn't report to him. He's kind of a stickler. The students have a hard time getting him to approve their projects. You'll learn all about that in the book, but they're big dating. I loved Olive's inner monologue. I thought she was so relatable. This is a book where you're reading all about these small moments where you can tell that they're vibing, but they're not acknowledging that they're vibing, which makes the big dating even better. Read this book. Just read it. Let me know if it's your vibe because I need to reread it. I think I reread it once a year since it came out and I just have such a good time when I do. So those are all of the fake dating books, the ones that I love to recommend and love to reread. Actually, some of these I haven't reread yet, but I plan to very soon because the call is strong. Does anyone else feel that sometimes? Anywho, if you have read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts and feelings. And if there are any other fake dating books that I have not mentioned in this video, please feel free to comment those down below. If I have not read them, I will add them to my TBR and happily read them because I love this trope. And moving forward, I'm just going to do videos for all the book tropes. So if there are any other book tropes that you want to see videos on, comment those tropes down below and I will see you in the next one. Bye book lovers. Thank you.